Hi everybody. Welcome to the second video of the fourth module on theoretical foundations and counseling approaches with relevance to Piaget's theory of cognitive development. At the end of this video, you will be able to comprehend the child's cognitive process through the four stages of development. According to Piaget, all children progress through four sequential stages as a result of the cognitive process that was explained to you in the previous module. Each stage has its exclusive levels of evaluation and interpretations of the environment and mental structuring. Completion of each level is prerequisite to move on to the next level. So the level of cognitive development of a child can be understood based on the stage that the child has reached. The four stages are the stage one being the sensory motor stage, otherwise called as sensory motor intelligence. And the stage two is the pre-operational period, which is otherwise called as symbolic, intuitive or prological thought. And the stage three is the period of concrete operations or concrete operational thought. The last stage is the period of formal operations, which is otherwise called formal operative thought. Now onto the stage one. This stage starts from birth and extends up to two years. As per Piaget, an infant tries to understand the world through sensory perceptions and motor activities. At this stage, the child's action indicates a form of thought or intelligence. The actions are largely reflexive and undifferentiated. At this stage, an infant gains knowledge of the world through innate abilities, which we call it as sensory experiences like sucking, looking, grasping, and listening. The toddler's learning happens fast and achieves a great deal within a short period. These achievements include motor activities without the use of symbol and language. Piaget mentions a fundamental concept related to this stage, which is called as object permanence. Object permanence is the awareness of continued existence of the objects and people, even if they cannot be seen, heard or sensed. An infant before his second birthday believes that the object or people out of sight stop existing. Piaget referred to this act as lack of object permanence. By the end of the sensory motor period, an infant achieves object permanence by developing an understanding of the reality and how things work through their own experiences with the environment. This is considered to be the main achievement of this stage as it means that the child has developed the ability to form mental images and representations. The sensory motor stage is further categorized by Piaget into six separate sub-stages. The first one is called as the reflexive stage. Here what happens is about the sucking, following object with eyes, grasping, and it is from birth to the first month of a lifetime. Second substage is primary circular reactions. This is nothing but about the repetition of a movement that initially occurs by chance. And it happens between two to four months. And the third substage is the secondary circular reaction. Here, the actions get repeated with intention and coordination. This happens between four to eight months. Then the fourth substage is coordination of the reactions. A coordinated movement that is also goal directed happens during this stage and it starts at the eighth month and ends by 12 months. Then the fifth substage is called as tertiary circular reactions. Here the child starts experimenting their own behaviors to meet the goals. This starts by 12th month and extends up to the 18th month of the lifetime. And the last substage of the sensory motor stage is the early representational thought, which is the beginning of creativity of a child. It starts at 18 months and peaks up to 24 months. Now onto the stage two, that is called as the pre-operational period. This stage starts from two years to the end of seven years. The term pre-operational stage means a stage that is preliminary to logical operations. The child at this stage builds an object permanence and proceeds to develop abstract thinking, which includes language skills. Acquiring language is considered to be the most important achievement of this stage. 
Along with it comes the understanding of past and future. Abstract thinking at this stage is limited to an intuitive grasp of logical concepts in some areas. The key characteristics of this stage will be explained to you now. The first one being the symbolic thinking. The child learns to form a mental representation of the world through which describing people, events and feelings become possible. The second aspect is decentration. The child at this stage cannot focus attention on more than one aspect of an object at the same time. The most important characteristic is egocentric thinking. The views of other people are not easily accepted though they became aware of it is called egocentrism. Egocentrism is above the intellectual limit and it is of course not selfishness. Then the next characteristic is seriation. The child starts to mentally sort things into a group. Along with seriation comes classification. The child will be able to categorize objects to a certain level. Then a semantic function. At this stage, the child develops symbolic way, which involves using symbols to represent ideas, words or images. For example, the child may use a stick to represent a sword. Then another characteristic is animism. The child treats the inanimate object as if it is a living being. Then also the key characteristics of the second stage do have two lacunas. One is lack of conservation ability and the other is lack of cause effect relationship. In the lack of conservation ability, the child lacks the principle of conservation which is an understanding that the quantity is not related to the arrangement and physical appearance of objects. And lack of cause-effect relationship, the child does not understand the cause-effect relationship at the pre-operational stage. Now let us move on to the stage three, that is a period of concrete operations. The concrete operational stage begins at the seventh year and extends up to twelfth year. Concrete operations connote the intellectual tools developed by the child during this stage. The operations are concrete in the sense that it is above the real world of objects and events. This is a period when the child builds on and gains mastery over abstract thinking. On the whole, at the end of this period, the child develops logical thinking, the ability for multitasking, logical sequencing and understand the principle of conservation. Now, what are the potentials that a child could develop at this stage? First potential is logical thinking. However, it involves only the inductive logic. That is, a child can generalize out of a specific experience and it happens gradually. On the other hand, deductive logic is not developed at this stage. The second potential is that the thinking becomes less egocentric and more sociocentric. The third potential is a child becomes capable of concrete problem solving. The ability of logical reasoning and problem solving that develops during this stage can sustain throughout life. The fourth potential is that the child will be able to understand the concept of reversibility, which is one of the most important development. Then the fifth potential is categorization or classification is possible and it proceeds to the next level of sorting things into subclasses and seriation to sorting things with adjuncts. At the third level, there is a change in the nature of social life of a child. The child starts accepting others' perspective and the interpersonal relationship is more of cooperative in nature. Mutual respect and rules from the base for moral relationship. As a result, justice is concerned as the norm of behavior rather than obedience. Now, let us understand the period of formal operation. That's a fourth stage. This stage starts from 12 years onwards. In this period, with each new experiences, the child begins to consider new possibilities and consequences of actions rather than relying on the previous experiences. This results in systematic long-term planning. The child acquires abilities of abstract propositions, hypothetical thinking, deductive reasoning, and interpropositional logic and reflective thinking. The capacities developed during this stage are, the first one is abstract thinking. 
level of the child's abstract thinking ability which has no physical reference is very similar to that of an adult and is often quick to arrive at an organized approach to solving a problem. The second is hypothetic deductive reasoning. Through hypothetical deductive reasoning, adolescents can proactively explore all possibilities in a situation and experiment systematically. The third potential is transitivity. Adolescents have a better understanding of the concept of transitivity. With the development of abstract thinking, they enter the adult world filled with hypothetical possibilities and exhibit egocentric thinking. The egocentric thinking is a result of the belief that their thoughts have no limit, which continues until they become adults and understand the limitations in their thought. Then comes propositional thought. Adolescents can judge the formal relationship among propositions. This is interpropositional logic based on which the stage is named. This is an important skill in formal operational thinking. Then the other potential is called as reflective thinking. It is a process of evaluating and testing one's reason. It helps an adolescent to evaluate their process or idea or solution as a third person and finds errors or weak spots. This makes the adolescents a powerful experimenter and problem solver. On the whole, according to Piaget, every individual grows intellectually. But after the individual reaches a formal operational stage, it is all about further developing and not changing the gained knowledge. To sum up the stages of cognitive development, Piaget's basic assumptions are children use their own experiences to procure understanding of the world. Children learn naturally even without being taught or trained by others. Children have an internal motivation to learn reinforcement though not essential. With these inputs, hoping to meet you in the third video. Bye.